Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, me head. Have you ever seen a black Santa Claus? Mm -mm. Now, maybe in Watts. I've never been in Watts during Christmas or uh, uh, Brownsville in New York, which are black neighborhoods. Why is that? Oh, there's some racist shit, but I mean, why? I've never seen a Mexican Santa Claus. But how come Black Lives Matter don't complain about that? Now, one of my pet peeves, and I'm sure I'm going to take shit about this, but I don't give a fuck. Um, Black Friday, the sales day. Everybody familiar, I've heard that, you know, the day after Thanksgiving and sometime after Christmas, some bullshit black, it's supposed to, where you go to uh, retail distribution centers or various stores, and they have sales, right? Why do they call it Black Friday? This is awful heavy. And how come the black movement's not on their ass? That sounds pretty fucking racist to me. I'll tell you when we're not on YouTube. But it's just a load of shit. Most of this stuff is just a load of shit. I mean, they are about to rename the Redskins. Oh, yeah, well, no, that, uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, I go uh, bananas over that with uh, all the renaming of the um, uh, sports teams. Fuck. Um, you know, we, we, we've swung too far the other way. I mean, way, 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 we swung too far, and it started after the Korean War. And then the Vietnam War, which was a very unpopular war, which I was part of, uh, the, uh, the, just, it was the, camel, the straw that broke the camel's back. And uh, we've been sliding down that road ever since. The um, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, go fuck yourselves. Uh, we'll be working today, uh, the, and we, tonight, uh, just like usual. And the, um, I was uh, thinking about a uh, memorous um, Christmas Eve many, many years ago where I was flying, uh, trying to get from uh, uh, Boston uh, to New York City to close a deal on Christmas Day. And I'd been on the road about three plus weeks, very little sleep, sleeping in airports, which I used to do all the time. Um, and this is before the security and 9-11, uh, that kind of thing. And um, the... Um, I was sitting maybe um, where the curtain is, away from the, the ticket agent to get on the plane. And um, I slept through, apparently slept through it, and I missed the plane. So I come up to the ticket agent, and uh, they said, we called your name, uh, sir. And I said, um, and this was a, a Hispanic girl. Chicana, uh, or, well, they used to call him Chicana, but I mean a Hispanic woman. And she says, if you sit a little closer, because there's going to be another plane in 90 minutes. And uh, I slept through that one, missed the plane again. So then she had me sit right where you are. There's one more plane. And, uh, but she had gone off duty, and there was another girl there, there, and I missed that plane. So now I got to get from Boston to New York City, no more planes. Now, they try to give me some uh, tickets, you know, for a hotel. You know how they give you when they fuck you around? They or give you free drinks or bullshit like that? I said, I don't need any of that shit. I said, uh, these, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to find, and you can't uh, uh, rent a private, well, we couldn't rent a private plane for me at uh, quarter to uh, one in the morning. And so um, I got a uh, car driver uh, to drive me, which isn't that far from Boston in New York City. I got to uh, New York just in time. Uh, to uh, to uh, t uh, take a, a sponge bath in the in, in the men's room of the uh, investment bank, and to go in and do the deal. Um, but I've I've spent a lot of Christmases working, and um, the uh, I just heard got some emails from some of you kids that um, they tried to contact their lawyers and their accountants uh, yesterday, and they're gone for the year. That's, that's unacceptable. That's not even 
And I, I don't blame it on the professionals, the accountants and the lawyers. I blame it on the use. You didn't hire them right. And for the first time, I mean, uh, they, you may want to play the victim because they, they left town, but it's your fault. And for those of you that remember Simon Bell, uh, the guy that did the, the big deal, all the money disappeared, and uh, the, uh, he was the only one that got paid 31 million bucks. Uh, those professionals and those big accounting firms of offer ask him permission when they can go on holiday. They ask him. They call up as one of his three assistants, or however many he's got, and they say, you know, you know if Mr. Bell is going to be blah, blah, blah. Now, see, that's so, just the look on your face, especially the Dutchman, I mean, it's so anti the antithesis of how you conduct your business. You can't even fathom it. Do you think that Elon takes Christmas Day off? No. He may not sleep on the shop floor of a Tesla factory like he does once from time to time. Your whole frame of life is the antithesis of what these high performers are. Almost everything in your life. And, the, you know, my task here, if this is where you are now, and high performance is over here, is for me to, based on my experience, my expertise, at least draw you one block closer. In the old days, I was able to drink, drag them, fuck, this close. I can't do that anymore. I physically can, but the kids, the material I have to work with, can't do that. And there's a whole, I've said it before, I, I don't say it normally in the hardcore, uh, testosterone levels in men have gone down uh, 17% since uh, 1986. In uh, 1998, a woman's average handshake was 118 pounds per, no, excuse me, 80, 88, eight, no, in 1988, a woman's handshake was uh, 98 pounds squeezing, you know, when you shake. And a man's was 118. In 2008, a man's was 103, down from 108, and a woman's was up 10 pounds. And then uh, I can give you testosterone levels, and I can give you all kinds of stats, which that and $5 will not buy you a coffee latte at Starbucks, but, and I'm not one to extrapolate what it's going to be in 100 years. And there's all kinds of theories why man's testosterone level is down. And, and the greenies blame it on the atmosphere. Well, how does that affect their handshake pressure? Russian handshakes, I'll give you another stat. Women's and men's handshake in Russia have gone up 15% during that same time frame. And I can, uh, you can go on and on, but nobody talks about it because they, some people say if you talk about it, it's going to even become more self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't believe that. We're doomed. It, well, no matter how much Dan Penny flaps his fucking mouth about it, I mean, uh, we're doomed. And the seminar has, has adjusted uh, uh, to that, uh, not to the gloom and doom, but to, you know, how do I get, because I'm a professional. You know, being a professional is doing what, uh, some days, uh, what you uh, don't want to do, but you're doing it professionally. That's a, and so every day, I'm up here, uh, a couple years ago, I had 105 temperature, not given the hardcore, but given the regular seminar. And I was, I was literally fucking dying, but I didn't, we didn't change the seminar a bit. There was one uh, chiropractor, uh, a tree hugger in the audience. The second day, he said, something's not right with you, Mr. Penny. I see the color in your eyes. 
So then I went and changed glasses because I have different pairs of glasses where it's a little darker lens so you can't see what my eyes were. But he was right. And, oh, he, he was distressed for me. You know those drama queens that get distressed because you're distressed? Well, I, mean, I thought he was going to have a fucking stroke. Um, and if I was English, I would have taken the week off. But, you know, the, uh, this is as uh, is tree-hugging as we get, the, uh, the change in dress. But everything else is the same. Everything else is the same. The, um, last night, uh, you saw Rockefeller, right? Edison and uh, J.P. Morgan. By the way, J.P. Morgan had a fetish. Because uh, he had, um, what's it called when your skin turns red? His nose was about as big as an apple. Uh, and it was about the same color as that red sweater. And uh, he didn't like ta getting pictures taken. And he didn't like having his profile taken because you could see how big his fucking nose was exploded. Part of that is because he drank, he used to suck up scotch with his nostrils. You know? Uh, and if you've noticed, people who drink a lot often get red noses and their veins expand on their, on their face. Well, that's another thing, allegedly, uh, that J.P. Morgan uh, suffered from. The, um, but he, he left a, a, a tremendous legacy, and J.P. Morgan's still around. Um, and um, the, um, so what are uh, them versus you? I'm not going to ask you how many of their traits you had, because don't bullshit yourself. Zero. We're so close to zero, it's not worth talking about. And again, success leaves clues. I said it during the regular seminar. Almost everybody we talked about would, on, on one, in uh, one degree or another was, would be considered an asshole. A prick. Uh, whatever the name you want to describe. In fact, some of the names that I'm currently described by, they were, you know, they were uh, the epitome of that. Strength, focus, and all those things. And they changed the world. And now you can go two or three generations closer to us, and we can see Elon Musk and those guys have similar qualities. They're not killing people in the streets and, you know, when they, uh, when they uh, picket or something like that. Um, but what are some, you know, some of the things that you saw in them, the, the qualities? And see, I call them qualities you probably don't consider them as qualities. But I consider them qualities when you can generate hundreds of millions, which would be now hundreds of billions of dollars, from scratch. I can relate to that model. Okay, what, do you, uh, what are some of the comments? Yes, sir, in the back. So he wanted to consolidate all of the electric, so he... Consolidate. All, and if you've noticed, and I hope you did, these are all consolidation plays. Roll-ups, 150 fucking years ago, and they're still around. Roll-ups. Excuse me, go ahead. So he needed to get Westinghouse out of the way, so he sued him, and he needed to get Edison out of the way, so he bought his shares of all the companies so, so he could create General Electric. So he just did, he did whatever it takes. He didn't think of any consequences. He did whatever it takes to get to his goal. Versus me uh, thinking about the consequences of not making decisions. Let's just stop at whatever it takes. And let's talk about you, and specifically the deal that you showed us. And you called the broker, and the broker gave you some bullshit answer, right? Vis a vis uh, the tax returns. And even though you contend to the small group, and I believe in the larger group, that you didn't spend that, that much time on it. Right? That's what you said. If you spend more than five minutes, you spend too much time. Now, one would argue from your point of view, well, I learned something. I would argue you didn't. Because I've been doing this almost 30 years. You didn't learn a fucking thing. You're bored. And normally what you guys, not just you guys, the kids, always have one or two favorites on their board that they can go to, the go-to people that don't make, you feel, don't make you feel as stupid as you are. 
So you have a go-to CFO, a go-to something, a go-to, and they are the kinder, gentler. And your excuse, the but in your defense is, I didn't want to take the time of all the board members on such a minor matter, some bullshit like that, right? When the truth of the matter is, you don't want to look stupid in front of six, seven, eight people. If you really drill down and you're absolutely candid with yourself, and if you, if you can't engage in self-deprecation, kids, the QLA model is, a, is going to be a long road. Uh, Justin said, uh, uh, or yesterday he says, I guess I want to kind of still uh, uh, be liked. Remember you said that? He was speaking for all of you. We've had one guy in the last three or four years who was uh, part of Mossad, the Secret Service of Israel, Israeli Secret Service. He's the only, I believe him, an assassin. I believe him when he says, I didn't give a fuck about what anybody thought. I believed him because he was very much like my dad's personality. And he sat right there. I believed him. 25 years in Mossad will harden you up. He had rhino skin. And when he said to the group, which the group was just, not because he was from that uh, ilk, when he said, I can't remember ever buying my mother a birthday card. I might have when I was young, but I can't remember it. I mean, the look on your faces. Not this group, but because we've been raised, myself included, that moms are kind of sacrosanct. We know they're fucked up, but they're still our mom, or more or less that. In this model, that that's not the case. I.e., Sally and I didn't see our, our mothers for seven and eight years, respectively. And I pushed it so hard because, you know, uh, you guys went to the regular seminar, and, and I remember you from the regular seminar. I, I reviewed your files before you got here. Uh, two, three of you, I reviewed your files again since you got here, just to make sure that I was, you know, this early onset dementia that a lot of my friends are getting, I'm not getting. And, yeah, I thought so. And I thought so. And so I, I, I'm, I'm still pushing it. What else about um, the film last night? Yes, sir. Have you seen the Nuremberg Rally of Adolf Hitler? You got excited, didn't you? <laughs> uh, a, lot of, a lot of those things which these people do remind me of that showmanship. Like showmanship, correct. Yeah, like when, he, when Edison lit up that house with the light bulbs, and then again in Manhattan. And when they electrocuted that poor bastard yeah, and they the couldn't kill him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny, is it? But you laughed. That um, created a bunch of lawsuits. Which they don't talk about that. But if that was your uncle, your brother, your son, but they, then the people that were suing didn't have any money. If that had been my family, we would own that state. We would own the prison. We would own the guys that threw the switch. I mean, because that's a lawsuit that they, they really can't afford to lose if they, but nobody, oh, go, go ahead. Uh, that was it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's showmanship, they, you know, and as I said, contrary to popular belief, I, 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 I firmly stand that Adolf Hitler was one of the highest performance persons that ever lived, uh, and for sure, probably the most high performance person in the last hundred years. And uh, it's showmanship getting back to when Carnegie put the elephant across the bridge and the... Uh, but going back or bringing it forward when, um, uh, and I wasn't there, when Steve Jobs uh, uh, announced the new uh, whatever, and it didn't work. And yet he was more fixated. He wanted to tell the guy, I want a blue shirt with pockets. Go out and find me one, if you remember. And where do I go? The you, the, the doofus idiot, where do I go? Instead of just saying, yes, sir. And they were supposed to be back in 15 minutes, I think. Well, how can I do that? 
Don't you see the diff? Can, you know, you see the difference in the thought process. And so, the the the, the more you get slide towards my side. Remember, I said five percent of my communications goes in your billionaire. We've got billionaires that don't even have one percent of my communication skills. You don't have to have communication skills to pull the trigger. And uh, the Israeli guy from a couple of seminars ago pointed that out on the one-to-one -one time with me, and I haven't really even thought about that. The snipers of uh, current fame that communicate because I've met some of them. Their communication skills are pretty fucking lacking, but they knew how to pull the trigger. And, and even though they, they're trained to, you know, hit the target, blah, 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 and, and double tap them, that means two, two in the head, um, a lot of snipers miss. And a lot of snipers kill innocent people. And that's just collateral damage. You guys want to make an omelet without breaking any eggs. Not just you, but I mean the kids. You want to make an omelet, and I've never had an omelet, even the most expensive restaurant I've ever eaten at, that didn't have a little chip of an egg of some you know, description. But you want to make an omelet with no eggs. First, you don't want to break the eggs, let alone, God forbid, have some egg in your omelet. And that's just, that's not the real world. It's the real world where you are, it's not the real world, which I hope you aspire to be in, because you're here. This is the perp, not this room, but the estate is the perfect metaphor for yesterday's dreams or today's realities. Most of you haven't been in an environment like this. You've been in a classroom environment like this. That's not what I mean. In an environment um, where, uh, you know, Sally doesn't have a budget to run this place. No, but I tell you, I don't look at the expenses because I want to be able to sleep. If I looked at the expenses, and I'm supposed to get year-end numbers because the decade ended, or it's going to end in a few days, I'm not looking forward to seeing them, to see how much this fucking hog cost me the last 10 years. I'm positive it's higher than the net worth cumulatively of this room. I'm dead fucking positive about that. Even with a gas station thief here. So I'm going to man up, though. Uh, I'm supposed to have the numbers by 15 February. I said, give them to me on 14 so I could make my Valentine's present. So I look at the numbers every 10 years whether I need to or not, because it takes me nine years to get over them. What else about um, the boys? Yes, sir. And Tesla, though, tore up his uh, royalty contract. So Westinghouse could, didn't have to go out of business. Now, you don't see that very often. You don't see that very often. You know, uh, most of the inventors say, well, if I'm going down, everybody's going down. Because uh, the, uh, they live in little, their little worlds that, you know, they're, they're not aware of what's going on outside. The, uh, yeah, but I mean, they were cutthroat sons of gun. I mean, God. Just imagine if they had iPhones back then. Fuck. Just imagine. But the guys today aren't doing anything, or they're doing just as bad of things, except they're not killing employees 
in shootouts when uh, they uh, they're uh, you know they uh, complaining for more money. But remember what Rockefeller said about uh, the refineries in Pittsburgh or wherever it was, close them down. Now you guys would be spreadsheeting it today until your next birthday. Do you see? Do you see the gap? There's nothing to spreadsheet. What else? Yes, sir. Moral and ethical swings in the wind for them. They, uh, well, they use I, I told you from the beginning, from the first seminar, legal, moral, and ethical, and, and, and morals and ethics swing in the wind, but it's got to be where there's a rule of law. Although I got an adjudication here recently uh, in a place that has no rule of law that I won, which I'm still dumbfounded by. I still, I don't know what happened, um, well, how we could, and they paid me money. Yeah, but you're right. They swing in the wind. And, uh, but your morals and ethics will also swing in the wind. I use an example. How many of you have kids? That's too bad. Anyway. Okay. You, you, uh, if you've got more than one kid, you always have a favorite. You've heard me say this before. Irrespective of what you say, there is a favorite. You tell all the kids, we love you all the same, and you bullshit them. But the kids know. When they grow up, you know, our, our three kids know who's the favorite. And uh, they, because you treat the favorite differently. So you take your favorite, whoever it is, and uh, the and you um, and you stand her here, uh, and the uh, I have uh, uh, I get one of my guns out and I pull it back, pull the hammer back, and it's loaded. And I say, uh, you've got till uh, the thirty first to do such and such, or I'm going to splatter. We're going to have to redecorate the uh, the hall again because there's going to be brain parts all over the wall. And it's for real. It's not one of these fucking video game things. 99.9% .9 of you will do everything humanly, humanly possible to preclude that action from happening with you. And the women, there's no women in the room, but the, wo the moms would be more effective than the guys. I told you when you left the seminar last time, to play it, it was like your last two minutes at the Super Bowl or the World Cup. And I explained to you yesterday why they score so readily, easily during the World Cups and the Super Bowls because they're going all out now. During the regular season, they're not going all out because of injuries. Well, you're not going all out either. And, 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 and you can do this job, especially during the corona era, having a slip tip, a broken arm, a twisted neck, a fractured shin. You're not worried, so you can go all out. But you don't. But you don't. What else about um, JP or, um, remember, vis-a-vis -vis you and the traits, we won't call them attributes, the traits that they have that you don't possess? Yes, sir. You're right. You're right. I mean, the few of the guys that I've met that are of that elk, um, they don't, literally, they don't know what day of the week it is. They don't know it's Christmas today. They don't know anything. They're 100% focused. I get a list from uh, one of my assistants. Uh, important dates that I should remember once a month and then the day of it. Yesterday was an important date because my mother died on, on Christmas Eve. Uh, the next one is my grandson's birthday. It's in January, I forget when. I don't do anything, but it's just for me to remember. You'd be looking for a gift for three weeks. That looks good in a movie. But they're all in. I mean, we, during the end of the year when we were closing deals, I mean, uh, 
the bankers and the lawyers and the accountants are always cognizant of what day it is. Always. And their goal is we got to finish on Boxing Day. That's the day after Christmas. Or the goal is to finish by the 28th because they don't say so they have time to get home. But I got some of the greatest concessions I ever did from a seller at 11 o'clock at night, New Year's Eve. Because they want to get home. And I'm going to the whip. Like a jockey, you know, when he goes to the whip, and I'm just going to the whip. We had, uh, I have four very uh, successful uh, Mexican mentees. I used to call them the Mexican morons in the 90s. Uh, two went to Harvard, one went to Berkeley, one went to William and Mary. Terrific schools. And um, they had a uh, meeting on a Saturday morning with one of the big law firms, still around, uh, and one of the big, at that time, big eight accountants. So the weekend before, we were at my house in Palos Verdes and we practiced. I played on the one hand uh, the lawyers, and on the other hand, I played the accountants. Because they were, uh, wanted to, them to agree to this thing. So the first meeting was 8 o'clock in the morning. I told them to get their little suits on, uh, and they showed up. And uh, the first meeting was with the accountants. The accountants showed up in tennis stuff, because they, they had a uh, 11 o'clock tennis game at LA Tennis Club. LA, Los Angeles Tennis Club is one of the most exclusive tennis clubs. It's got like a 50-year waiting list. And they were there in their tennis shit. Uh, the lawyers uh, had a 1 o'clock tea time at uh, another exclusive country club. They come in their golf shit, right? And um, the, uh, there was five main points we needed from the lawyers, and we, there was three main points we needed from the accountants. The lawyers did not leave the meeting till 1.15. They had 11 o'clock tea time. Between 11.30 and 1.15, they caved on all five points. All five. The first 30 to 45 minutes of both meetings, they apologized to these Mexican kids. And they ranged in age from 24 to 26. Four kids. Uh, for being not dressed professionally. The accountants, where we showed up, not we, my team showed up late. Um, we're getting ready to leave, uh, but they stayed and they were there till 5.15. So they never got to play golf. And they called me from Alvaro Street in downtown Los Angeles, the four kids, drunk on their ass. Um, and these are the same four kids about a month before tried to take me out to dinner. And uh, I went to an inexpensive restaurant because it was their pain. And when the bill came, the, between the four of them, they didn't have enough money. On that deal, they made five million. And knowing that they're drunken, like drunken sailors, I, they probably went through it in the weeks. But you're acting like you're those accountants. Your actions show me that you're closer to being those lawyers and accountants than you are a uh, QLA assassin. And these kids didn't, don't know shit. They were well-educated, but they had, they had cheat notes written on their hands. Everybody know a cheat note? Where you're, you're anticipating a question, so you write the answer on your hand. But their hands were perspiring so much, the, 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 the ink bled or smeared. What else about uh, JP? Yes, sir, in the back. It's, uh, so money, obviously, um, with JP um, was was critical and important. Um, there's two points I have. The first is that he had a high performance father who hounded. That's him. yeah. That is that. the whole story, really. His dad was a ball busting son of a bitch. And um, secondly, therefore, it's actually not. A, they these guys didn't have goals as such. They had their destiny. It's not a goal. It's not just a small goal. It doesn't just have a number attached. It's, it's attached to, to their, 
their sense of who they are and their destiny. And then that just transcends everything. And uh, just to go off um, a former point, you know, that um, they don't know anything else. And so everything's congruent. It's who they are. And, and they'll die doing it. Very much, uh, you know, I don't know about destiny for my part, but it was congruent. There was uh, the guy that killed the two people, the seminar who's successful in Florida. He said, and uh, he said, I, this, I have a slide that says, uh, the, uh, when I decided to uh, kill them, everything else fell in place. And then it said convicted murderer. And so then uh, he raises his hand. I didn't say it exactly like that, Mr. Pena. Of course, none of the kids in the, in the group knew who he was. So now they all turn around and want to know, what does he mean? And I said, it's not you. You're not the only convicted murderer I've trained. But you know, me growing up, I knew I had to pull the trigger. Whether it was a physical altercation or in bit which transcended in, you know, in my life and into and, and, and business, I always knew that I had to pull the trigger because that's what, before, they called them alpha males. An alpha male was called a oak, oak wood, because oak was supposedly the strongest tree. That's what they were called, in, you know, a couple hundred years before alpha male came up. Some psychiatrist came up with the idea of, of an alpha male, and it's based on a study of gorillas. It's not important. The, uh, but I just knew what I had to do, and I just did it. I didn't, have, I didn't go through the thought process, what would my dad think of me? because that was ingrained in me. I know what my dad would think of me if I didn't do it. Not if I did it. Because I, I got almost all the time I got in trouble for doing it. For the action that made me more he-man or whatever the terminology was in that, those days. But you're right, J.P. Morgan, it was his destiny. And to this day, it's the only bank that was named after a guy it still exists. It still exists, which speaks volumes. And he was prepared to pay a lot more money to uh, Carnegie um, uh, than he did. Um, but they're all terrible people. I mean, uh, I, I, I think I told you the first day, uh, Rockefeller, Tom Watson, the founder of IBM, Tom Watson Sr., and Henry Ford um, all got the Victoria uh, Cross, not Victoria, uh, the, 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 the German Cross, the Iron Cross, from Hitler, personally. And then when uh, uh, Ford found out uh, the kind of guy, or no, Watson found out the kind of guy he was, he gave the cross back, but um, Ford and uh, Rockefeller kept it because they supported the, the Germans during World War I until we got uh, uh, in the war, and they supported Germany during World War II until we got in the war. Because they ma made the decision, money versus lives. Not dissimilar to what the governments are doing now. Yeah, J.P. Morgan, it was, it was, it was destiny. And it, it's very much like uh, the Bushes have a destiny, the Clintons have a destiny, the Rockefellers, uh, the Kennedys. It's inbred, and the people, those families, all send their kids to the same schools, same schools that our kids went to, because they figured out four or five hundred years ago when they founded Princeton, Yale, Harvard, that rich people, it rubs off, as opposed to where you went to school. And I went to school, too. Not just, in fact, you guys, most of you that went to school, went to a much better school. Okay, YouTube.